Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it's time for a follow-up on the Hayabusa 2 mission. The Japanese mission was launched in December 2014. A few months ago, it got into orbit around asteroid Ryugu. Now it has finally dropped two of its rovers onto the surface, and we've started to get pictures back. Now, these are very low-resolution pictures. The rovers are absolutely tiny. They're about that size. They weigh one kilogram each. These are called Minerva. They don't have wheels. What they have in interior to them are reaction wheels that spin up and then they break them and it rolls away. Now, these things don't have to spin up very fast because the escape velocity, the kind of velocities they need to move across this very small asteroid are like a centimeter per second. It's very, very small. If they spun it up too fast, I guess in theory they could kick themselves off to escape velocity and we wouldn't want that. So Hayabusa 2 is actually a sequel to the Hayabusa mission, which had all sorts of problems, including those uh, reaction wheels I discussed in a previous video. But just for programming issues, they, they had a pair of rovers and they were dropped off into interplanetary space instead of dropping onto the surface. So it's really good that we got these two rovers onto the surface of an asteroid. This is the first time we've had really good pictures from the surface of an asteroid. Previously, the near Shoemaker, near Earth asteroid Rendezvous, it had uh, orbited the asteroid Eros for a while. And at the end of the mission, the mission designers thought they would just try and soft land it on the asteroid. And they were quite surprised when the spacecraft was able to still operate. It was never designed to land, but they got it. But the cameras didn't focus correctly at that close distance. So now we've actually got space probes on the surface giving us really good images. I'm going to say really good. They're tiny because the spacecraft is tiny, but it is so close we can actually see you know, amazing details in the structure of this kind of asteroid. This is a C-type asteroid. That means it's a carbonaceous chondrite. Uh, it's got a lot of carbon. What it's missing is it's missing the light volatile. So it's very close to the original composition of the solar nebula, but anything that's light, anything that can boil away has been driven away by solar heating for you know its existence. Now, these two probes, these are the two small ones, they actually are going to have more rovers. There's a total of four rovers, four landers on this. There are, uh, and there's some other stuff which we've mentioned in the previous video. So, yeah, these are the Minerva, and there's actually two of them that were put in the same package. There's a larger, larger Minerva, which will land sometime next year, I believe. And there's also a German-built spacecraft, we landed. It's called Mascot. Unfortunately, Mascot uses batteries rather than solar power, so I guess while we'll continue to see pictures from the Minerva uh, probes, we're probably not going to see very much data. Also, uh, Mascot doesn't really have cameras. It's more about checking mineralogy using you know, other wavelengths, magnetometers, other sorts of stuff. So this is fascinating. Hayabusa 2 is continuing to investigate the asteroid. I believe it's moving in to investigate the polar regions. The asteroid spins relatively quickly and uh, a lot of the material has migrated towards the equatorial zones. In fact, I'm going to say when I originally was watching the descent, we were all very excited to hear they were released and then we heard nothing for 24 hours. They, and originally... JAXA had said, oh, they've spot rotated around to the far side of the asteroid. And I was like, but it's been eight hours. The asteroid has rotated more than once. I was very happy when I was proven to be wrong. You know, sometimes you feel very pessimistic because things don't fit. But I think, you know, Japanese space missions, they tend to be very slow releasing their data. I think, I don't know if it's a peculiarly Japanese trait, but it takes a long time. It's not like NASA that put the stuff out very quickly. So Hayabusa 2 is also going to do surface sampling and to get surface or to get material from underneath the surface it's also carrying this anti-tank round. That's how I describe it. It's a shaped charge propelled by explosives. It's going to shoot, hit the surface, knock out a big crater and then the spacecraft is going to swoop in and pluck some stuff from the fresh, uh, freshly blown up crater. And to actually get video of this, they don't want to have the spacecraft in the line of sight because then it could get hit by material. No, it's going to have two other little spacecraft, two little deployable cameras that will be left in a position where they can see this activation, this shot, and uh, you know just transmit the data to Hayabusa 2. So that's a total of like seven spacecraft that this thing is carrying, which is kind of crazy. It's like a little 
space aircraft carrier. I don't know, it's like air, spacecraft carrier. Carrier. And of course, the whole thing then returns to Earth and drops off a sample canister. This is a great mission. This is fantastic to see this data coming in like this. So that's what's going on. I, uh, keep watching this space because it is not over yet. And the best instruments, the best moments are yet to come for Hayabusa 2. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.